Go, go, go. Ah, on y va. Alors, euh, Michel, lui, question essentielle. Est-ce que ce café est bon euh, Oui. <rire> Just wanted to make sure that the sound is good. Neige, Mar <rire> Marcus, your sound is good Yes, very good. Good coffee, you. Marcus. OK, François-Xavier, je viens de tester. Hugo, je ne sais pas qui c'est. Qui c'est, Hugo Who is Hugo Is he with us or... I mean, he's not going to be a Zoom bomber. <laughs> no, I don't think so, but he okay. refused to put his video on, so we don't know who that ah, is. Okay. Okay. J'ai vu le Zoom bombing tout à l'heure. C'est impressionnant. Je n'avais jamais vu à ce point-là. Les images ouais. arrivent et tout. Wow, ça a des potes. Hein. <laughs> this, this is where you realize that this kind of stuff uh, attracts fuckers, losers, yeah. you know People who have nothing else to do. And by the way, they, they may be robots, but even if you program these robots, it makes you a huge loser, a big, big moron. I don't know why people do that. It's, uh, it's quite uh, depressing how uh, stupid they can be. Uh, so here's what I suggest. We are only a few of us. So we're going to work on your own case studies. Okay. First thing I need to say, in order to introduce you to uh, the, the, the way we think nudge and why it's extremely powerful at every stage of the selling process, starting with the pitch, which was my point earlier, uh, but of course, until the closing and until developing customers' loyalty, uh, uh, because you always keep nudging them within the, the client relationship. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is the fact that um, it is painful. I mean, it can be painful, but it's a neuronal, re you know, mental reorganization. You need to create a new mindset. And when you start explaining this to your salespeople, it, it, it will sound counterintuitive. That's where, where the, the, you know, Betty told us about the, this uh, psychological leverage. It's extremely powerful. If you use them, I remember you, I remind you, what are these three leverages? Reward, recognition, control. Okay, she was talk talking about autonomy. Control is the same, okay? I mean, it's very close. Uh, control is more subtle than that because sometimes you, you don't realize that you are in control, but you actually are in control. But when you, again, I repeat, when you, 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 when you confront people to their own freedom, it can be a source of anxiety. I mean, subtle anxiety, of course, it's not, they're not afraid. It's not phobia, but it's a little bit of anxiety. So the way you introduce them uh, through the nudge to their own ability to make the right choice needs to be worked out uh, before you even start uh, getting into this process. But it's gonna be extremely, again, gratifying and powerful results. I promise it, it makes an amazing difference uh, in terms of closing. It, I mean, the money uh, comes from, from this quite quickly and obviously. At the moment I'm doing uh, this job Uh, with a huge insurance company. Uh, we started during the beginning of the COVID uh, and they, they, they wanted me to work with them on influence, you know, influential strategies. So progressively, I, 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 I brought them into the nudge thing. And this is the fourth order for the four different uh, business units so far in, in one year. Okay, so for me, it's a big success because they only get back to me uh, because they get huge results. But when I say huge results, I don't exaggerate because most of the time when a guy like me has results, he can say we uh, increased uh, the level of sales by, let's say, 10%, 20%, and so on. Uh, for some of the people uh, I'm following, it's uh, twice more than, than before. It's, it's amazing. It's extremely powerful. It's on, it's, it's a, if, you, if you want, I can say it differently. Everybody says it is so important to build a relationship with the clients and develop trust. Oh, yeah, great. But once you said that, what you need is concrete and pragmatic tools that everybody understands. So before letting you speak and try to remind yourself about any case study, anything you want to ask, uh, there is this last thing I need to, to express very explicitly. Nudge comes with the, the understanding of what influencing people is in an ethical way, which comes with understanding what storytelling is. Because in order to make sure nudge is easy, um, you need to have a story to tell. Okay, let me give you an example. This very morning, 
I was with a client who wanted to impose his own reason, you know, uh, we need to be uh, up to speed right now. We need to get results right now. We, we need to, uh, you need to answer my request right now. I want uh, you to, to go as fast as possible. We have to do it for yesterday and so on. I didn't say, hey, let me explain what nudge is. Of course not. I didn't even try to, to uh, try and apply in a stupid way what you could believe is the methodology, okay? Before trying to build any, uh, you know, before trying to architect uh, any uh, uh, possible choices, I told him a story. And, and I have this good story because one of my clients is a huge decision maker, he's a billionaire. And uh, he's the guy who tried to buy a, a very important uh, soccer uh, club. And uh, he called me and he wanted me to help him as fast as possible. And I said, there are many aspects of this that I don't master. It's dangerous. Don't go there now. Don't build a, a, a team now. It, it's not a team. It, it's too fast and so on. And the guy is well known now to have been one of the most humiliated uh, well-known uh, business maker in the world to be to be that humiliated. Sorry for my sentence, um, because the the team was so unstable that he, he generated leaks, and then he failed buying this soccer club because too many people knew it. But what's even worse than that is that. I mean, the, the, the part where it completely failed in terms of influence is that once the leaked came out, he maintained his version. He said, yeah, I mean, towards the media, of course. He said, yeah, we want to acquire this soccer club and we have the money. We have a lot of good arguments. You should say yes. And that's where just the following day, the, the, the chief uh, executive officer of the club uh, uh, um, uh, granted an interview to a, to, a, to a big media and said that will never happen. And when I teach this story to my own uh, leads, my own clients, it's amazingly powerful because I can demonstrate them uh, how you know not nudging people can fail. In this case, it's amazing because it's someone who has access to huge funds a lot of money, big money. So no negotiation. I can give you a lot of money. And he failed. And he failed during the COVID, you know? So choosing the right story is also extremely important. And it's in itself a big process in order to make sure people become aware of, you know, the, 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 the relationship that you, you want to build in order to get some quality. So the, uh, is there any, anyone, uh, Marcus, Michel, or François Xavier? We would like to share uh, a business case, any business case, any go-to-market, go-to-market issue, if you can. That's why I'm happy it's not live because I want keep this to be confidential so that you can talk. It is Hello, live. <coughs> not sure you hear is me. Live? No, it's not live, uh, Luke, uh, Loic, and it's good if it's I, not I live. Said, I said it was recorded so that I can uh, upload it to YouTube after. Okay. okay. Now it is crap. So, if it's done, I, I told you it was recorded. Okay, okay, it's okay. No, it's okay. If you don't so want, you can... I can stop. If you don't want, I can stop recording and, and forget about recording. Whatever you put Okay, so, no, so for, me, for me, it's okay. But if, if the participants want to share confidential business no. case, yeah, they, 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 they... yeah, yeah, absolutely. Be aware that it is recorded and potentially uploaded if it is of quality. <laughs> I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, go. So um, you decide, okay? At any time, we can tell Loic to stop recording if you want to share something that's very confidential. But the best way to understand Nudge is to start from, and, and you will see that my methodology is powerful because I can sort of, let's say, improvise a, a beginning of a, of, a, of a relevant answer by using this uh, mindset, which I swear is amazing, is really amazing. So uh, amazingly powerful, I mean. So do you want to talk about any go-to-market issue? I guess if you wanted to participate, it's not only because you are curious, <laughs> it's because you have a, perhaps a business case in, in your mind, a difficulty that you are facing, or, or just 
a good business that you would like to increase and you may be facing obstacles or you want yeah my my, uh, my question would be i'm really i mean i've heard of nudge uh, through social thing from but it's really for me i'm really a pure pure newbie about this topic first time i attend a session good. about good, this good. topic i heard about it but i didn't really pay attention to i take this opportunity my my um, My question is, when I train uh, guys on social selling, the issue is how I can uh, influence people uh, through my LinkedIn activities. Because I think there is two aspects. You have the meeting, you have a a face-to-face team or Zoom. So the relationship is in construction and you have interaction like we have today. So by your uh, 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 visual aspects and so on. I would like to go one step before and the, the major issue of the reps I'm training, even the good one at large, large companies like Oracle or smaller one is how I can, I manage to grab the attention of people and uh, through LinkedIn and combo selling email and so on to, to move and to start a conversation. Because what I see usually, they are not that bad at building a conversation, the right guys, and growing the deal because they have this, all the techniques and so on. But the step before, so I'm wondering how Nudge could uh, help in a certain way and how personally I could improve in this aspect of uh, the first contact point uh, when you do digital selling. Sure. So first thing to say, Nudge implies that you you perfectly understand what is your client's roadmap, you know, the client's journey. Yeah. Uh, well, not the buying journey, not the buying journey, their roadmap, okay? I mean, what is going to happen to them once they buy any kind of solution that you are trying to sell them, okay? Mm-hmm. So you need to understand what happens afterwards. It's key because if you don't have... You're like you're exactly like a scenario writer who needs to know what's the outcome of his own movie. Okay, so you wouldn't you wouldn't tell a story without knowing the end. Okay, except that this is an interactive movie. <laughs> okay, and and your client is the hero, and trust me, okay. that's the difficult part because for two reasons. First one is common sense. Let's say, um, uh, let me give you an example. I'm, a, I'm a, let's, what they call a pitch master because I, I, I love the, the pitch uh, exercise. It's, it's amazingly powerful. For me, it's the first step before even trying to go to market, which is my specialty. You know, I was trying to work on strategy and, and I'm working on pitch. So sometimes my friends are, are laughing at me, but I say, you know, most of these people go to market without even mastering their own storytelling and they can't even express <laughs> the client's need. So they look really stupid. And trust me, uh, I don't know if you already tried, but sometimes when you know you, you ask to a big boss of one of the Fortune 500 companies, can you pitch me your product? And it's crap, okay? Especially in France. Okay, Do so- want, uh, Yeah, you sure. to give some insights to François Xavier on, on how we tried and how we are doing it currently? And say you're definitely right, Frederick. We need you need to understand before uh, nudging, which is a little good push, guiding your yeah. customer with a very good question. But <clears throat> if the preparation is to understand the why of your audience, okay, which is all about selling. Understand what drives them, and that requires a lot of effort to analyze. You are talking. You're willing to sell to large companies, so to understand who uh, in which mood in what other question this executive or this person in that organization has as a why and that it's not easy information to find so you have ways to find it by following that person trying to get connect see what she or he likes and uh, try to have your view about as a center of uh, of interest nevertheless that takes time because it's a step by step takes time multiple days weeks until until you have an idea on what this executive at Oracle uh, has in mind, so you can nudge him in the direction to bring him in your ecosystem and then potentially guide him to a 
to place you an order for whatever you want to uh, solution you want to sell him. There's another tip that sometimes is a little bit faster. As you may not know Oracle, and I'm just pinging on them because you mentioned their name, okay? But you may know <clears throat> what others in that industry, in that segment, similar to Oracle, want or are practicing. And you know what the others are doing or the industry is doing. You have some stories about the best or the worst cases that others may have applied in this industry. And then that helps you to win time to connect directly with the right person, with the right question. And those right questions, for instance, you want to sell something to a customer that you never know is doing whatever, French fries, okay? And the way to nudge him, and you don't know anything about French fries. So try to understand what this Matt Keynes customer uh, or Lamb Weston, whatever, has in mind. A way to approach it is with a little bit of analysis, you understand how they perform. You look on what is public, the annual report. And you figure out just by accident that, hey, why is the productivity per employee of this company lower than what is the industry standard? And here you have a good question to directly guide the person to something that will trigger his mind because he may not have the answer. He doesn't, he may so not literally know. What, you, what you describe, nudging is what you describe. Nudging is what I yeah. describe here. It's really okay, so, okay, so it pushing, works. Okay. guiding the guy with a good question that makes him think that he doesn't have the answer. But the fact that you are asking him the action, uh, the, the question, he will say, mm, this guy is smart. Maybe he has the solution. Okay. Maybe he has the answer to that very good question. Then it's worth to spend five minutes with him. And that so, far, so far, so good, my friend, Michel. Because Michel spent a lot of time, well, it was already, he was already capable of it, but you know, I, we worked on many workshops together. So for me, it's amazing because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be transparent with uh, Marcus and uh, Francois Xavier. Michel used to, to be my client, okay? So we started with the good question. But I said, so far, so good. You made one little mistake, my friend, when you said, what is a good question? A good question is not, doesn't mean that your audience will, your contact will believe that you may have the, the answer. It's not a good question. And I need no, you to the answer, but yeah, okay. No, 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 no. Let me let me tell you a little bit. You deserve it because <laughs> because because you forget you forgot what I told. <laughs> okay. Uh, let okay, me thanks, try. Thanks for the question. Just to to look back on this, I think yeah. I, I mean, it's more or less what I push my customers to do is say there is no way you can have a discussion with a CFO, CIO of a company or CEO if you have no clue of where, what are his goals and so on. So in a social selling mode, what I suggest to sales is be connected to other people and try to have conversation. And then you will have a good reason to connect the CIO or CEO or CFO. Um, but now I'm curious to see how, how to apply uh, the nudge methodology and... Uh, and so. Yeah. So that's only the beginning of the nudge, okay? Uh, I've created, for example, what I call a cognitive buyer's journey. Mm -hmm. And for me, the three first steps are pinging. Okay, I, I, I'm borrowing the, the word to the geeks, you know, to ping someone is to say, hey, attract their attention, okay? Ping. Mm -hmm. uh, then nudge, second step, and three, pitch. You don't want to pitch people before you have nudged them. Okay. And what we worked on with Michel is ping, how to attract their attention. And then we confirmed the, 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 this attraction through the nudging question. Now, we need to define what is a good question. Yeah. That's the difficult part. And where Michel is perfectly right, and that's why I'm happy he didn't totally forgot what we talked about together. <laughs> Love I'm going to tease him a lot. It's a pleasure for me today. I'm having fun. I'm going to tease him a, a little because where he's absolutely right is that, yes, there is a close relationship with 
between a good question and, and the way your audience perceive your expertise, okay? The good question proves that you have the expertise, okay? Proves that you understand them, but it doesn't mean automatically once I've said that, that it's a good question. So maybe now you remember, Michel? Yeah, exactly. Because the, through that question and through that interaction with the C level of Oracle that you have uh, tagged, if you get an interaction, I would say he will share with you his view by not no. having the answer. No. And you may learn from him as well to build the solution together. Now you are almost there. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's not exactly it. Okay, let's imagine four drawers that are the symbol of our relationship to knowledge, okay? First drawer, you open it, okay? These are the things, okay, let's say this is my drawer. This is my, uh, for coming from my desk. <laughs> first one, first one. Inside this drawer, there are the things I know that I know. Easy part, you know? I got a graduation from a major business school I'm proud of, so I know what I know. They told me. Second drawer, I become a bit less stupid when I get more mature, you know, less arrogant. So with the wisdom, I realized there are things I don't know. So there are things I know, I don't know. The third drawer with knowledge inside are the things, well, I don't know, I don't know them, okay? So what would do a good sales guy, he would reveal to you the things that you don't know, you didn't know. You agree with me? Is it a good sales guy or not? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, but now let me tell you about a top performer because that's the good sales guy. The excellent sales guy, the top performer, he will show you the, the fourth drawer and he will tell you something that you already knew but you didn't know that you know it. That's the wow effect. You know, somewhere you get the intuition that, ah, yes, I knew it. Okay? In order to make it fun, let me tell you a, a little story in a book that I quite like. It's uh, Ante Sara from the author is Paul Bowles. And there is, uh, this man has issue in his couple, so they decide to travel. Uh, because they need to talk and get closer to each other. But once they travel, they get acquainted with another guy. So it, it starts with, you know, threesome stuff. And uh, there is a moment that they all drink alcohol and uh, the woman stays with the other guy in a, in a room and they have sex. And the husband doesn't know. But a few days later, the husband becomes a bit uh, irritable, you know. He's not nice. He slams the door and, you know, he's kind of aggressive. So the other guy says to the woman, do you think he knows? <laughs> and the woman says, yes, he knows, but he doesn't know yet that he knows. And it's, it's extremely interesting because if you think about that, there are many things our brain knows already, but didn't formulate it. Now, let me get back to a good question. A good question is a question that you didn't think to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. So as a salesman, you're not asking the question in order to get the answer. You're not asking the question in order to show that you may be the right guy to answer it. It's not the point. The point is even more generous than that. You reveal to the guy a question that is a good question, but he didn't think about formulating it this way. And that's why it's powerful. Okay, it's, of course, it's related with his own expertise. So, of course, it's dealing with something he knows. But he didn't think about asking the question in a way that could help him think, okay? Let me give you an example from yesterday night. I was talking with a guy. It's going to be a great study case for you, okay? Happened yesterday night, authentic. I was with a guy who was in a good company selling financial services. In his LinkedIn profile, He's, he's making a list extremely powerful of the bullet points of his expertise, okay? They have a strong financial expertise. Strong, very strong. 
And by asking him, I don't know, questions, and uh, I, I finally got my own good questions, okay? Uh, because the, the guy briefed me and he forgot to explain what was the true psychological obstacle in order to convince a chief financial officer to work with him. What is the true, the true obstacle? So the guy realized, okay, I, I didn't think about asking myself this question this way. So first thing for me, first point for me, okay. He said, yeah, that's an amazing, and he said, he was with his partner, the two decision makers, two founders of this big company. And he said, that's a fucking good question, Fred. Well, thank you for asking. I'm going to tell you something. Our clients, they believe we are in competition with them. I said, what? Yes. The chief financial officer believes that we are going to teach them lessons. These people, they don't really like to be taught or explained. They don't want to acknowledge that they need us. Okay. So I'm going to give you a shortcut. And that's my gift for today. Here's how we wrote, we wrote the pitch. We rewrote the pitch. Sorry, my Siri starts <laughs> in, on his own. Um, uh, and I know, Michel, you have Siri too. And sometimes, you know, it, it start, it, it, it's starting a lot, you know, by itself. I don't know why. Anyway, so here's what we decided. We replaced everything on, on the website because it doesn't work. Okay. We found what was the good question. That as, of course, there are many good questions, but one of the best in order to open the door with this chief financial officer was to... to to uh, compare themselves with a pilot of a big, you know, big plane pilot. Pilots, they have co-pilots, okay? Okay, so we said, don't you think even the best, uh, the best uh, captain on board need a co-pilot? And when do you think they mostly need them? Well, they need them when, it's, uh, when there is a storm, when it becomes com very complex, when you have to, to, to take complex decisions in a chaotic environment, okay? So this thing extremely powerful happened during the pitching session. They realized that they are not selling this service, service A, service B, service C, we're full, we are smart, no, 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 no. That they can be a useful co-pilot offering clear understanding of the situation in case, in case, and only in case of an emergency. They narrowed the, the, the point in order to make sure their targets perfectly understand who they are about the right issue. So by just reformulating the question, they, uh, uh, we rebuilt a new environment for, you know, the mindset. So the pitch started by, uh, we do that, we do that, and are very technical to show that they are powerful, okay? And we completely changed, and it started by one word, the truck. That was the new pitch. The following was, okay, the truck. Your boss comes into your office and says, we have to succeed this merge or this uh, financial operation for yesterday? What are the metrics that you can immediately grab in less than a few minutes in order not to be late? And we put the finger on the, 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 the complexity of their job. It's easy for them to understand what they do in terms of financial uh, visibility of their company, for their company. It's easy. It only becomes complex when they have to address a complex issue within a short period of time. This is where they need a co-pilot. So the, the question was, wouldn't you need a co-pilot at this very moment? So you see how powerful it can be? It changes everything. The way you pitch your business always starts by listing the technicalities. You can't help doing this. And even if you think you, you are sure that you ask questions, you are going to intrigue them with a nice question that will be intellectually stimulating. Okay, good. But it's not enough. You need to ask them the question that they didn't formulate. And of course, they can have the, the, the answer. It's not about you know, expecting from you that you will be the guy capable to answer this. No, no, no. You are the guy who just uh, orientate, uh, 
who just who can just orientate the right question on the right field, on the right issue. So let's put the finger on the key question that your decision makers are asking. And you know what's the good thing into this is that I am actually um, sorry, I am actually talking about a roadmap here. If your target is a chief financial officer, there is an obstacle happening in this roadmap. There is an issue. There's a moment when everything becomes complex and chaotic. And this is where they mostly need you. So you need to make sure that they realize that this is what we are talking about. They don't give a damn shit about uh, how good you are in your job. They need you to prove that when you ask a question, you put the finger on this painful moment, very accurate, where they, 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 it's, it may be too late before they even realize that they need you. You understand what I mean? Does it make sense? It's powerful, huh? So you keep working like that when you are a good advisor. You keep asking the question that will help them formulate the issue. You help people formulating the issue. You, you, you don't pretend that you have the answer. That's the trap. Yeah, but because if you have the answer, if you have the answer, uh, Michel, you tend to become the hero. And what did I say just before in this case? It's, an, it's a very interesting case because the, these chief financial officers in, in, the, in, the, in the business case that my client gave me, okay, he believes that they hate consultants because consultants think they know better, think they are the hero of the, the story. You see, Michel? I agree, but I would say, so there's a, there's a gray line which I'm still struggling with, as what's the difference between nudging and coaching? Okay, uh, the coach will, uh, first thing I have to say, not all coaches are good, okay? Yeah. And uh, most of them make the mistake to behave like a psychologist or even worse, like a consultant, okay? The big difference between coaching and nudging, as I said, is that the coach helps you formalize the issue and asking the right question. That's where there is a common ground. But the coach never says, once you start addressing the issue, what he believes to be the, the, the right solution. Okay. Never. Okay. Uh, that's that's you know, where everything changes. And, and, and there is something even more subtle. A consultant has, has, the, has the right to have his own uh, certainties, his own solutions, he can suggest them, okay? But in the nudge, he has to suggest them in such a way that he values the freedom of the decision maker because the decision maker is the hero of the story. He's the only one who will decide what is good for him, okay? So that, that implies that you have to resist to the tendency to pretend that your solution is the best. You need to express all the possibilities that you, you may have to address within the roadmap when, you know, when life becomes chaotic, complex, and so on. This is the moment when they may need you. And at this very moment, they must feel free, but not alone. Yes, guys? Does it speak to you? Very much. This is just the beginning, of, beginning of the nudge. Huh? We are not going to cover yeah. this in a half an hour or one hour. Of course, it takes sure. years. But that's the way you can introduce yourself to nudge. And then you will develop storytelling in accordance with a true understanding of how to best nudge people. May I speak? Uh, well, I joined your breakout just to understand deeper the nudge. And there I have a question. Is this theory based on a literature book or? And second, I trust <clears throat> Yes, there is one book you need to buy. It's Nudge by Richard Taylor and Cass Sustain. Okay. It's the called Nudge. I was, the book I was working with is uh, Building a Story Brand. I don't know if you know that. Yes, I know. And it's a good way to combine. It's, it's well combined with nudging. Uh, the guy uh, went to, uh, obviously, he knows how to tell a story. The reason why I can tell I am a true storyteller is because I went to a cinema school during for one master, the, the best French cinema school called La Femis. And during one year, they taught us how to recognize a good story because you may want to, to invest in a good story. This guy and I really, want, I really want to tell you this. You need to work on storytelling because so many people believe they understand storytelling and it's 
complex in itself, even more complex when you storytell your brand, because the big mistake we always make when, we, when it comes to a brand or a product we sell is that we introduce it as if it was the hero of the story. And, and if I tell you the solution is that your client has to be the hero, it remains extremely complex because this is where it's a real job to make sure you write and you position the right story that will commit your target client, your target audience. It's very complex. That's why I have no problem sharing this secret with other consultants because when you work on it, you realize, ah, this is the real work, you know? Yeah. You don't decide that you are the storyteller. And that's the reason why not every movie is a blockbuster. So, but, but you know, don't try. Don't even start if you don't understand the basics. And the basics is that you are never, never the hero of your story. And you can't oh. write a story if you didn't identify the right enemy, the possible obstacles and the complexity of the story. That's another thing. That's, that's exactly the elements Donald Miller is talking about. And he yeah, I know. himself, you know, yeah. So, and I didn't know, uh, I didn't say, I got it. I just said, well, I have this book. I stick to it. I work on my story. I learn it. And uh, I realize uh, there is some connection with what you are talking. So that's very interesting. And um, yeah, of course, it is a shift in the mindset. And I think also a, a liberation. If I don't have to be the hero, I am free to be me. And he is speaking in terms of guide. Every hero needs a guide. Every pilot needs a co-pilot. Yes, a but story. but uh, not being the hero makes no. the, 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 this roadmap, this storytelling, extremely complex because it's easy when you are the hero. You just need to explain what you are going to decide. If you're not the hero, you become a scenario writer and the scenario writers, the good ones, always tell you, I cannot control my own characters, okay? Because I brought them into this situation and they kind of decide for me. So this is where their creative genius enters in action. And this is where you have to show a lot of psychology. And in the business field, this is where you have to have a perfect understanding of what's at, at stake for your client. You see what I mean? So once I told you this kind of little secret, the huge part of the job needs to be done. And this is where it becomes very tricky. Because if you want to get results, you're going to have to work. And you know what? It's a great news because if anybody could say, you know, like on, on LinkedIn, so many of my uh, fellow uh, peers say, I am a storyteller, I am using storytelling, no, 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 no. Uh, and no offense, not even by reading one book, you will get there, okay? It's a lot of work and it's a good news even for you, uh, Marcus, because it's, uh, uh, it means that when you get there, there, there are, there is a lot of work to provide. So it means that you are, uh, it's not easy, it's not for everybody. So you won't have a lot of competitors out there, trust me. Uh, I always work with people who tried many times and failed and, and need to go even deeper and understand in, in, a, in a much more uh, strategic way, a more subtle way, how to write this bloody story. You know? And that's why I'm working with brand managers, decision makers, as well as you know, the, the, the business unit, uh, uh, managers who are leading uh, sales teams. But my point is that most of the time, the, the best way to build the story is to think like a go-to marketer, which means combining all the, the different expertise's point of views. That, that's the most difficult part when you get into a company. You need to make sure that marketing and sales and strategic advisor are involved. It's very important. And One minute left. especially clients. One if you can involve your clients, if you can commit your clients, you win. And that's what, by the way, uh, Michel did, because there was a moment when we launched a, a few meetups and we got this feedback from the clients because we started to nudge them and the clients expressed really funny issues that we didn't think of. One of the funniest, Michel, I remember, is the guy who said, you know, my problem is that I don't know my problem because I have so many solutions surrounding me that nobody remembers in my company what was the initial problem that we were trying to solve. <laughs> so, you know, we realized some uh, part, um, this is just an example amongst many others. We realized where was the complexity for them. So that was the final 
additional layer. You need to organize these meetings in such a way that they deliver you with the resource because customers become a resource in the nudge. They become a resource. They are the hero, but they are a resource if you listen to them properly. Thank you. Okay, so this uh, room will close in, well, I, I guess we have to leave the room now. Okay, guys, we get back to the main one. So okay, that was uh, cool. If you liked it, let's, let's stay in touch. Uh, François Xavier, you come into a force. Marcus, we get in touch on a uh, on LinkedIn. And Michel, we need to go to this, you know, to eat the le pavé rouge des Champs Élysées. Hein? You can, if you need to speak, you can put again your mic because you, are, you have been on mute now. You are again on mute, okay? Just that you know. Hmm? Okay. Oh, there are people in the waiting room now. I have to look at the waiting room. Okay. Mandy Market, I know Silve Sylvia Barahona should be legit also. Let's yes. imagine it's legit. I hope so. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay how was your how was your session uh, the i would like uh, the recruitment session to give us uh, a little bit of uh, of uh, feedback and i want it from participants not not uh, moderators okay anybody speak up yeah it was a good exchange between candidates and recruiters and uh, good practices on linkedin the do's and don'ts <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I already got many tips before, but um, I'm learning every day. So I got extra tips today, which, I'm, which I can really apply for my job search. So give me the three, the three tips that you learned in this session. Uh, that uh, even if a headhunter contacted you via LinkedIn, if they don't have a mandate with, the cli with their client, you can contact directly the company without you know, waiting for the reply of the headhunter. Okay, anything else F from another participant, perhaps also? <clears throat> go on, go on. No? Well, maybe, you know, I can, you know, give another like little tip, like whenever sharing anything on uh, LinkedIn, please follow up your own post in, let's say 10, 15, 20 minutes. And, you know, if you get some, let's say, comments or whatever, react to those. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. From the moderators, anything that you want to add to what those people have learned? <laughs> it's okay for me. I hope, uh, I hope it helps, but I think we have very concrete uh, questions. So uh, yeah. it seems to me they... Uh, Martin and I gave some some useful information. I hope so. <laughs> Please do not hesitate to contact me if it's not the case. Okay. So, what did you learn, Martin? For example, what did you learn to in these sessions, Martin? Did you learn something? Uh, yes, I learned what I already knew, but I got the confirmation that it's really difficult for people to find the right way uh, and the right job, and. Uh, Therefore, uh, trial and error, uh, try different things, be active, and uh, then you will, get, uh, uh, you will find the right job, but you have to be active and don't uh, wait for somebody who will find you, even though that is with, with the right keyword, it will help. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, in the, in the session about uh, nudging, nudging. I'm talking, what did you learn in this session? Or what did you discuss in this session? Anybody? Oh, where is Marcus? You were in the session, so put yeah, on your mic. Very, okay. It was very interesting. Thank you very much, Frederick. Uh, he offered us some insights of uh, running cases or cases they were back. Just uh, helpful insights, some meat on the bones uh, to understand the full dimension of nudging so very helpful thank you very much okay thank and you Anybody what i learned else? Yeah. i learned what i don't know i know <laughs> what i don't know <laughs> a little bit more than before so okay okay anybody else who was in this session apart from frederick here michelle has, has left i think 
So, somebody else was there? I, I, I know you were more than one, two, you were yeah, five no. or six. Yeah, it's Frederick. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't see you. I'm, I'm so blind now. Okay, give me your, your insight on what you get got from this. No, even if I, uh, I worked with Frederick a lot on edging two years ago, uh, it refreshed a little bit some of my uh, learning. Because when you learn, you learn only 10%, you retain only 10%, and then you absorb it and you do what you think is nudging. And definitely, uh, digital transformation is impacting us every day. So uh, you have to constantly revisit some methodology, and that is very powerful. So what, what specifically did you, did it remind you or put again in your brain? Is nudge. What is a good question? It's a good question, exactly. <laughs> uh, the difference between nudging and coaching, coming with solutions, uh, not trying to sell absolutely in nudging, it's not the objective at all, but uh, I'm not trying to uh, say refrain yourself to come with solutions if the nudging takes. Okay, and Frederick, give us uh, what you learned or what from this session. Well, something I, I um, recently realized is that uh, I am deeply fed up with all these people who want to have quick solutions and believe they can become experts or at least know something in less than an hour or two hours or four hours by following a, a guy or participating to workshops or reading one or two books. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that, hey, guys, this is the social selling forum, so you can really hear what I'm going to say. It's good. It's good when it is complex because when it's complex, it takes time. And when it takes time and when it takes energy and a lot of resource in order to be a great expert in your field, it means that only a few people can acquire this knowledge. So please seek for complexity, for accuracy, and, and never forget this when you, you participate to this kind of stuff. I mean, our job only consists into giving you a, you know, a small insight so that by yourself, you, you go deeper into the topic. That's the point. That's the whole point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lan, last session, you were talking about press personal branding for entrepreneurs. So what did you get out of this session? Please uh, go, go on. Somebody, Virginie or whoever. Okay. I see Virginie here. That's why I say, but... Yeah, okay, put your mic on, Virginie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what I've learned, um, it's about um, to be self confident, first of all, uh, when you do personal branding. And uh, there is, a, that is, a, there is, a, you have to feel inside you uh, how to communicate with your clients or with your uh, targets. And um, and you have to build with uh, this feeling uh, your uh, your personal branding. Okay. Anybody else got a feeling about that or learned something? I don't know, Karin, perhaps, or I don't know who was there exactly. I don't remember. No. Okay. Who was there? Me? Another Me? one. Go on. Me. Um, I was um, I was learning that. Sylvia, one, one second, Sylvia. Don't do this. Don't do this with your video. That's that's my my teaching to you. Look, look at me here. This yes. is you. You should be like that. Okay, do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's perfect. Perfect because you will speak to us like you did this morning. Okay, go, go okay. on, go on. Um, what I learned is that we have to have very clear our target. Uh, client, let's say, and also what we can offer to them and a clear, um, a clear idea how we can approach to let people know how we can help them. An elevator pitch, very clear. Okay, thank you. A any other participant who want to share because you were quite numerous in this session, which has been, by the way, live streamed and we you find it in the replay. And perhaps I will, you will also find the nudging session in the replay later. Okay, anybody else? Otherwise, I ask uh, Roger and uh, Betty to give th what they have learned to tell us what they have learned. Betty, what did you learn? Well, 
I learned people are in different stages of their businesses, but still we all share the same uh, basics, which is sometimes we have to go back to what are the foundations of our businesses. So this is a question that we do all the time, it, no, no matter what the stage you are. Okay, okay. And Roger, did you learn something with this session? Yes, I learned that uh, every participant in our session has great potential. And if they dare and they do, they will have great success. Just dare, do it, do it, just do it. Okay, thank you, That's, that was perfect. So we finished the last session of the Social Selling Forum, but it's not yet over and we will continue this streaming a few minutes with everybody so that we have a summary of the whole day by those who have participated to more than one session, of course, if you have participated to two, three, four, five of this session, you may give us uh, your return on your uh, on today's experience in your with your point of view and what you have learned from the whole day. Okay, so and and I'll, I will finish by the way with Gabor and Anne, who are the the, the organizers. So. First of all, who wants, for example, Gero was, yeah. and Marcus, were, okay, Gero, what did you get from this day? What so did you was, learn? I, I learned a lot. So it was fantastic. So you, when I logged this morning, I was saying, hey, perhaps I will listen one, uh, one hour and things. And, and, and I, I get stuck uh, on my chair the whole day. So, <laughs> so that was very, very, uh, a lot of fantastic insight. So I was really impressed by the quality of all the speakers, and uh, so thanks, thanks a lot. That was a, I had a, I spent a, a great, great day today. So thank you're, you. You're, you're not finished. You, you, you need to give us three, three, three things that you learned today. Try to remember <coughs> the three most important things. The things you would put in a post, by the way, in a LinkedIn post where you show how you progress yourself. You would put these three things. Uh, to, to help others progress also, not only you. So what, what did you tell us three things that you learned or three inspiring stuff or whatever, whatever. Just yeah, that no, you, it's, a, it's a lot. I know you, you did a lot, but uh, no, no, I really like uh, I have to, 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 to watch again. Uh, so what was presented by Roger, because I, I, I really like also the psychological aspect uh, of it. And uh, um, so this was uh, really good. I, the uh, Frederic also also was really uh, the quality of the video and the fact that when you you were speaking and you were watching the uh, inner eyes, that was really making also a, a difference. So the thing <laughs> is that I really think so investing in a in a right setup make a difference. Betty also I think you were standing up that makes also a difference. Also we. You have a lot of energy when you speak and things. So I think it's uh, also something uh, I learned also that having the, the, the right setup is very important. And uh, yeah, and also, uh, yeah, also the way you manage it with different uh, camera and angle, it's, uh, so it's, it's uh, very, uh, being very professional. It's, uh, it's, it's make it uh, very interactive and, and, and by the way, Michel Lui has put has put the same kind of studio uh, for working for Rockwell Automation. You know, yeah. That's, you should do it, of course. Yeah. It's, it's not that expensive, by the way. It's just a yeah. question of. Uh, no, so you, I think you were sh showing also today that uh, yeah, we we can do really great things uh, 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 through video, and that can replace uh, when it's really well done, like it was today. It can really replace uh, uh, physical interaction. So. Because yeah, I, I, as I say, I, I was not planning to stay all the day, and I, I, I get stuck on my uh, on my desk because I was really so interested by uh, what was discussed. So, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's a good a good testimony. I like it. Anybody else want to say something uh, about what you learned today and give some some real practical things to the others? Huh? Go on, Olivier. Okay. The uh, the first thing um, is definitely about keywords. That, uh, that we should um, take more time and to identify and to present in a more efficient way with uh, more strengths and accuracy. So that was the number one, the keywords. Number two is definitely the brand mission statement. Not everyone has uh, participated to our workshop, but that was great to see how to categorize and structure the, uh, 
the positioning. And number three is definitely the key for me is that communicating with the aim of helping. And that was um, that was something very interesting and very um, revealing for me. Yeah, yeah. From Bashi, from from me, from others. That's what <clears throat> we we try to share with all the participants to the social selling forum. OK, anybody else? Raise your hand and say something. Whatever, yeah. No, oh, yeah. I see. I see Clara. I see. Uh, I see people who have been here. Okay, Jari well, I... have been. Uh, okay, Clara, go on. No, somebody else. Marcus. Yes, yes Marcus. Marcus. Okay, Marcus. Yeah, yeah. I learned what what Zoom bombing is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, is that all what you learned, Marcus? No, no, no. Praise God, not. So. I, I'm on a journey, I already mentioned, and on the way, I got some confirmation for confirmation for what I already uh, applied, learned, I'm doing. Um, that's, that's a value, of course, as well. Then I got inspiration for next step with, um, well, by Frederick. Uh, from Frederick, I learned there is a question where I people know but they have forgotten that they know and if i can ask them a question to remind them that they didn't know or knew but have forgotten it then uh, that's all okay well to say it differently and make sure everybody understands uh, thank you marcus when you ask a question as a salesman, a traditional salesman who doesn't understand how to sell, you have a tendency to have to ask a question that's good for you because you need the answer. For example, when do you think you may decide to invest in this? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> who's taking the decision and stuff? The answer is good for you. Asking a question is a service. I'm asking you a question, not because I want to get the answer, but in such a way that when I ask this question, you realize, oh, that's a good question because I didn't think about asking this question myself. That's how you start attracting people's attention the right so, way. It's so a generous read. way of asking questions. So you should read, definitely read the book, Nudge. Huh? Nudge is mm -hmm. called Nudge, by the way. Huh? But that's not in the book, by the way. Huh? Oh, it's not it's, in the book? Nana, this part. It's Bas the, Bas the future Basque Nana's book. Okay. Uh, anyway. No, no. <laughs> but it's based on nudge. It's based okay, on yeah. what you can. I mean, the good thing, and sorry, uh, uh, so, so, sorry, Loic, I wanted to say the good thing about nudge is that once you understand it, you can create your own methodology. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, Clara? Sir, oh, I don't sorry. know what I. I don't know yet what I really have learned because there are many inspiration links, uh, tips. I have to go through and uh, I will find some more stuff. And thank you very much. Thank you to Roger who invited me and thank you to you who organized and moderated it. Thank, thank you, you thank you. Thank you to you. Jari, Clara, Sylvia, uh, who else has not spoken? Virginie? Uh, yes, and uh, thank hey, you for you have invited me. I got an insight view into various fields and also the discussion before, and I would recommend it again. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Nice. Jari, do you have something that you want to share? Well, I guess, uh, actually, can you hear me? Because I had to not change my battery ran out from the headphones. You hear it's me? It's better, it's yes. better. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. So, uh, so I got like inspiration for some of uh, new posts for my LinkedIn. And uh, then, you know, again, the hint that, you know, I need to you know, follow up coming whatever, 10, 20, 30 minutes and uh, thank all the people who uh, kind of reacted to those posts just to keep them, you know, up in, in uh, algorithm, whatever uh, visibility chain or whatever it's, it's called. So I need to do that. And actually one thing that we didn't discuss is the time difference, because I don't know if my posts get, you know, visibility in US, West Coast, East Coast or Europe or who knows what in India. So that maybe get another discussion for the next next session that how to yeah. you know handle that 
Yeah, you can you can go to, uh, online. You find a lot of stuff about that, by the way. Yeah, and uh, you can go to Clubhouse. You can go back to a, a French-speaking social selling forum. And many times we talk about this. Thank you, thank you. I, I I don't want to spend too much time with you right now. So anybody else from the participants who want to to give uh, what they learned? Otherwise, we go to the to the speakers. Yes, I would like to say. Okay, Tina. So I found out now uh, why I was coming here. I was coming here to get inspired and um, I am inspired. And uh, three things is, um, the f first of all, it's getting to know other people I would never meet in uh, real life. And I think that's a, a great opportunity just to, to come together and talk about some um some topics which um which are uh, unify us Th thank and you continue the thing is also um about focus and trust i don't know what is um i mean both of of it is very important and, focus and uh, trust more for me and I, I have to remember myself because it's we are in a time of um, uh, information overflow and uh, therefore we really have to be selective. And I am very proud of myself to be here for the whole day. <laughs> I am proud too, of course. Okay, nobody else? Anybody? Karin, yes. you wanted to say something? Oh, yes, Karin, Karin perhaps, or Sylvia? No? Otherwise yes. I can. <laughs> oh no, wait, wait, wait. Let's finish sorry. with the participants. Sorry, sorry. So this is, I, I wanted to say that also for me it was inspiring and also to have the viewpoint of the experts how we can do a better approach to the things that we want to achieve. So that for me was very helpful. And I want to thank you all of you that the information and also the way that you presented really uh, give me um, a fresh air and inspire me to see the things that I'm doing in, in a different way. Thank, thank you. Th thank you. So, Anne, you can give us your what you learned today because you are the, the co you are at the at the start of this session of this forum. Thank you to you because without you we would not have done an English speaking social selling forum specifically for Swiss Switzerland. Okay, go on. What did you learn? Yeah, thanks a lot also for your organization, Loic, and uh, to everybody. Uh, I learned that uh, I can better use the hashtags when I do some posts in uh, LinkedIn and how to search on the hashtags about the same topics or the companies. And uh, I particularly like the exchange with, uh, you know, recruiting specialists because it's rare that you are in a position where you can ask recruiters on their methodology, how they s search candidate in, in LinkedIn, for example. So that was really great. Any, anything else you learned uh, more generally? Or? Oh, yes, I, I noted down tons of links and how to uh, use some LinkedIn features that I didn't know to get some statistics on your on your post, for example. Uh, tons of uh, links I have uh, noted down how to photo filler, how to you can get some feedback about your picture uh, that the you know the public likes the most and that you can use for for your CV, for example. So it's uh, yeah, lots of links and lots of ideas. Okay. I have a lot of homeworks now to do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, now I, I jump to the to some of the speakers uh, before finishing with Gabor. By the way, uh, uh, where, where is Roger? Roger, is Betty, Betty, Betty. What did you learn, Betty? And uh, and then Roger after. Well, I learned that um, I love to communicate with people with so different uh, backgrounds and uh, ways to think. And it was so nice to see all the dreams of everybody and all the steps they want to do. Very inspiring. So more than I learned, I'm going out very inspired by people's uh, ways of reaching their dreams. Yeah, and, and by the way, I must say, I was inspired by you too, by the way, I, I must say it. Thank you very much, Roger. 
I knew you were good from the start because we met two years ago with with uh, Bashi uh, in Zurich. By the way, it was in the in the flesh session, and these sessions sometimes are really open too. It's the same when we did the Geneva session with Gabor. It was you could Tina, you could have found the same kind of uh, perspective and 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 sharing, yeah, in a, in a, in the flesh session. Uh, or, Roger, what did you learn? I learned that improvisation always beats preparation. Yeah, and. Oh, I like this one. This one is one of my favorites. As long, as long as you as are always, always rehearsing and there, you are always working on the job like a, like a boxer, you know, like a Rocky Balboa and so on. If you do it all the time, you can improvise without any problem. Uh, are you okay with that? Absolutely. And special thanks to Betty for supporting and co-hosting. Yeah. Thanks. I, Frédéric. I, I... Oh, sorry. Somebody wanted to say something. No? No, I say that my pleasure. It was nice to have yeah. you. Frederic, what did you learn today, Frederic? You you spoke, but uh, yeah, he speaks yes, quite a lot. Like um, but... in fact, uh, I'm I'm gonna say something that may sound narcissistic, but each time you talk to an audience, you have to accept to learn something about yourself, and that's why I incite every one of you guys, because most of you are involved in complex selling, marketing, B2B uh, of, offering and so on. You need to talk to perform webinars. You need to do it. And it's all the more important to say that, that anyone could answer me, well, there are too many. Well, I am shy. Well, it requires time. It requires resources. I need to prepare. Why would I do... Uh, webinars while I don't have enough time and so on and so on. Big mistake. We should be online every day. We should combine all the tools. You should accept to make many mistakes. As long as you recognize them, you will sound very uh, smart and open-minded to criticism and you will always improve yourself. That's why we all need to say a big thank you to Loic Simon because he's the guy who understands that. He's always online, he wants to help others. And uh, well, I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to do that. Thank you, Loic. You are great. Thanks to you, we learned a lot of things about yeah. ourselves. Th thank you. It's, it, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. But I want. To <laughs> thank you, Frederic. He hey, on stage two years ago, we kissed. By the way. <laughs> I think well, it was years three ago. years ago. Three, three time goes by. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You it imagine, cool. but we are French. We are more Latin than in, than in Switzerland, perhaps. So we, yes. do, we do it. Yeah. Uh, Gabor, Gabor, you are the you are the wise guy here. Yeah, really. Uh, the wise guy. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, sounds like I'm getting older. Well, <laughs> I, I'm 64, by the way. I will be 65 on the 14th of April, and this will be the Social Selling Forum Jubilee. Woo! like anniversary, you know, on the 14th of April, in French, sorry. Okay, go on, Gabor. By the way, I'm April 1st, and it's not a joke, so... <laughs> yeah, good. Okay. So, today, I was very... Uh... Okay, go on. It was my Google Home. Okay, go on. Hey, Google. Uh, yeah, I would like to thank all the participants, because without you, it wouldn't exist. I would like to thank all the presenters. We had very good debate. Uh, it showed how uh, difficult and complex is social selling. And it's not because it's uh, on social media or digital. It's just the nature of the human being. And uh, there have been a, a lot of key learnings for all of you. And all the sharing we did was great. And the only thing I would like to ask you is, are you ready to meet us again for a next session, maybe? in half a year or near a year. What do you think? If you're OK to meet again, just raise your hand so we can know. Uh, in English. Uh, <laughs> in French, in French or in English? English. English. <laughs> English. In English, in Schweizerdeutsch. In Schweizerdeutsch. Ja. Oh, ja. Ja, ich verstehe Deutsch, aber nicht, nicht Schweizerdeutsch. It's more complex to understand Schweizerdeutsch than Deutsch. You have a year to learn Schweizerdeutsch. Ja, ja, okay. Ja, okay, Markus. <laughs> And Roger is speaking very well all the languages I remember when we were in Zurich. But anyway, we did a, a, a Schweizerdeutsch English kind of session when we were in Zurich uh, physically, you know. Okay, uh, thank you, Markus. I thank you. I thank Anne because, again, without you two, Perhaps I would not have dared doing this session 
And, and now we can all take something to drink. Now it's not yet time to drink in the afternoon, like my, my <sighs> bottle of water. I suggest you go uh, go walking somewhere. I will go walk al around the La Marne. And you know, La Marne is like a, an affluent of the Seine. I will go there and walk during one hour now to get a little bit fresh air and eat because I, I forgot to eat because it was so good to listen to Roger and Frederick that I did not even spend the time to eat. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you, Gabor. Thank you, all of you. And I wish you a, a, a very good uh, weekend. And if you want to listen to another social selling forum in French, the next one should be, should be, but I'm not 100% sure, on the 20s of March in Africa, Algeria, on the Saturday. This one especially uh, will be in, on a Saturday. And then we have on the 30s of March, we have the social selling forum in Vannes. Vannes is a small, a small city in France, 50,000 inhabitants. But it is a Zoom, a Zoom social selling forum in the same way we did today. Open to everybody, but hosted by uh, people in uh, Morbihan, you know, in the west, western part of France. And then we continue in April with four forums in April. And I, I think I will do a, an English speaking one sooner than later, perhaps not spe specifically for Switzerland, but English speaking, I think it's good also. I will try to do another one. Very Hopefully without the bombers. <laughs> no, the bombers <laughs> is something you cannot avoid as long as you try to, to test Twitch. If you try to test Twitch, you will get bombers but because Twitch is or perhaps perhaps even Twitter. Perhaps it's the Twitter and the Twitch uh, streaming that creates the, 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 the bombers, you know. The, main, the guy who react online, I have the chat here online, it's mostly LinkedIn and Twitch. LinkedIn, Twitch, and then a little bit coming from YouTube. Yeah, that's what happens here, okay? And so I think some of the Twitch people are a little bit like young or what, not young, but uh, whatever. I okay. don't even know Twi Twitch. Yeah, Twitch is, is, is a major platform today. If you don't know TikTok, if you don't know Twitch, if you don't know Discord, and if you don't know Clubhouse, by the way, if you, if you are in business to business, you, you should still try Clubhouse because we got mixed feelings here in this session today. But I believe at least you have to try it. At least you have, and not one day only and then go back uh, a little bit longer, but not still don't be addict don't be addict to anything neither uh, okay anyway i could i could continue during 10 hours so i will stop <laughs> i thank you very much and thank you if you watch this in replay you can come back to live sessions in zoom it's better than just replay i can tell you yeah can you tell this it's better in live will yeah? you will you send the link to us yeah uh, yeah on my on my linkedin profile you, you go to Loic Simon, that's me in French. It's, it's a, a French, mostly an English uh, link profile. You will find a post. By the way, you, al you already find all the, all the sessions in replay on my LinkedIn profile. Okay, you already find all of them because they have been streamed. So they are available on my profile in my posts. Yeah, but you will find them also on, on YouTube under the playlist, which is called the uh, uh, Swiss Social Selling Forum. Okay. And I, I'm creating this right now. Uh, I will finish it uh, this evening. OK, and then you find all the session. Hopefully none of them has has been screwed. I hope it's, it's, it's all OK. Uh, and you find also all the others, hundreds and hundreds of hours of social selling forum that you find online on the social selling forum YouTube channel. OK. OK. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You can you can go you can go. Those of you who want to stay a little bit more, like Anne and uh, perhaps Gabor, if they have time, we can debrief if you want or not. And then you go. And I, I will. Once there is nobody else in the room, I will shut the uh, shut the doors. So if you if you know how to to go away, you go. I will not shut you down. Okay. If somebody wants to ask a question, that's time. Now we are in the after, on the off. Uh, I'm going to stay like this now 48 hours so that you cannot go. <laughs> no, eating, no toilets, nothing. No shower. Oh, yeah. I need to oh, Jari, you wanted to say something or just to clap your hands? Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Roger, by the way. I'm, I'm really happy that you stayed with us quite a long time today. That's good from uh, over busy people like you in Switzerland, huh? Gabor, the same. <laughs> and I saw yeah. that, that Bashi was coming mm -hmm. back and then he, he went away from uh, one of the sessions a few minutes ago, but okay. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, thank Betty. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, everybody. You, you may bye leave bye. Or, or stay and ask me a question or whatever. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye bye. You. Bye for those who Thank you very much. Bye. bye. Thanks. Bye. I, I'm still streaming. Huh? Don't don't say anything nasty. Nasty. Huh? Because uh, <laughs> don't bomb me. Okay. I will bomb. We have the same day birthday. We have the, the, the same. <laughs> the what? same day. Same Fourteen day. of April. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank bye. you, thank you. Bye bye, bye bye. Ugu, Ugu is really with us. He's really a, a, a real guy. Ugu, or he did not speak. He was there. I was thinking he was one of the Zoom bomber, but not. Bye, uh, Ugu. I I suppress you anyway. Okay. <laughs> Olivier, did you have a uh, last question or no? Otherwise, I can I can I can say bye bye to you. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. Salut, Olivier. Voilà. Salut Frédéric, tu, euh, je, je vais faire un débriefing avec Gabor et, et Anne rapidement. Tu n'es pas obligé de rester, je te laisse partir. Hein. Je te fais partir d'ailleurs. Euh, et puis j'arrête le streaming. I stop the streaming. Non mais attends, juste j'avais un truc à dire. Moi maintenant que je vis en Savoie... Attends, non, non, wait, 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 I stop attends, the streaming eh ouais. first. I stop... Non, je voulais, juste, je voulais juste dire un truc. C'est bon Avec le streaming, dans le streaming, tu vas le dire De oh, toute façon, ce n'est pas, pas un gros secret. Mais euh, c'est mieux que tu arrêtes le stream. Ah ben voilà, I stop the stream. Bye bye guys, you, you want to hear the secret. Ok. C'est fait, c'est parti, il n'y a, a plus de streaming. Non, c'est juste pour oui, dire oui. que maintenant que je vis, euh, je partage mon train entre Paris et la Savoie, euh, je suis beaucoup plus disponible pour faire des trucs, Genève, Zurich, tout ça, je suis un peu plus près. Et je commence à développer mon réseau là-bas, donc ça serait bien de... Voilà, euh, n'hésite pas. Et on peut faire aussi un événement à Annecy. Ben écoute, moi, moi je vais te dire... Voilà. Hein. La manière dont on, fabri dont on le fait en général, c'est quand Anne vient me voir et me dit « Tiens Loïc, on devrait faire un forum en anglais pour Zurich. » Et c'est comme ça que ça s'est passé. Si tu viens me voir, tu me dis « Loïc, on en fait un et, et, on, et tu choisis la date et puis tu et c'est tout et on le fait. » quoi. C'est aussi simple que ça. Hein. Mais en général, je ne le fais pas dans l'autre sens. Ce n'est pas moi qui suis allé draguer Anne ou, ou Gabor pour aller faire un forum euh, comme on l'a fait aujourd'hui. D'accord C'est dans l'autre sens que ça doit aller. D'ailleurs, je dois discuter… Euh, pour toi, Roger, je dois discuter avec Bachi de faire un, un forum de nouveau en Schweiz-Sodutsch de la même manière euh, pour Zurich. Hein. Voilà. Et moi, je suis ça marche. Bon, ben, je te drague euh, dès la semaine prochaine. Voilà, c'est ça. Allez, <rire> allez, salut, salut tout le monde. Bye ah. bye. Au revoir, Frédéric. Merci. Bye bye. Bye bye. Salut. C'était un plaisir de faire vos connaissances. Salut, bye bye. Roger, est-ce que tu veux encore nous dire quelque chose, toi de Non, non, je, 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 je suis mon attend. Mais si on a fini, je suis. Ouais. Ouais. Moi j'ai encore une question pour Salut, Roger. Salut, ouais. salut. Si on ouais. fait un, un Swiss Living Forum, une deuxième édition, est-ce uh -huh. que c'est mieux de le faire en, en Suisse allemand ou en allemand En allemand. Ouais, c'est ce que je pense aussi. Parce qu'il y a ah. beaucoup, beaucoup de gens qui parlent par les Suisses en moins. Ouais. C'est beaucoup plus compliqué. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Et, moi, et moi je comprends au moins parce en allemand. Hein. Au Deutsch. moins je comprends parce que Suisse à Deutsch, je ne comprends pas. Hein. Je me souviens, c'était incroyable. Il y avait des, des clients de Bachi qui... Alors là, c'était là. Ouais. Hein? Bon, OK. Merci, voilà. Roger. Je te Merci à vous. Partir. Bon Salut, hein, vraiment. Salut, bon bon week-end. Bye, bye. Bon week je te supprime. Bon. Ah oui, il est supprimé. Bon, eh ben, écoutez, euh, ça, bon, c'est quand même... Hein il y a... Oh, il y a quelqu'un qui n'est pas parti. Attends, je... Euh, Martine. 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 Salut, Martine. Salut, Martine. Hop, supprimé. Oui, David. Euh, David, il est encore là, mais il n'est pas là. Hop, supprimé. Anne, elle est là, voilà, c'est tout. Il ne reste plus que nous. Il y a quelqu'un qu'on voit de dos là, je ne sais pas si tu le vois. C'est moi, c'est depuis le début. <rire> il est cool. <rire> Et il réagit, c'est trop ah bien. Ah oui <rire> Oh putain. Bon, alors, euh, écoutez, je suis content de l'avoir fait finalement. Alors, il y a eu un peu de problème et puis effectivement, il n'y avait pas aussi de autant de monde que j'aurais voulu parce que pratiquement aucun, des, aucun des, des animateurs de ce forum, mais même pas vous d'ailleurs correctement, hein, même pas Gabor, il n'a pas eu le temps non plus de le faire correctement. Il n'y a pas eu beaucoup de promotion qui a été faite. Si, il a fait, lui, il a fait des mailings, hein, je crois. Des... Si, Moi, Gabor, il a fait. J'ai ramené du monde hein, quand même. Oui, toi aussi, vous deux, vous avez ramené. Heureusement, c'est toujours les, les organisateurs. Mais j'avais demandé aussi aux speakers que j'avais invités d'emmener de, de, au moins cinq personnes. Et... Mais bon. Oui, mais. Bah, il... Le truc, c'est que c'est très compliqué, ça. Je n'arrive pas à ça. Moi, je n'arrive pas à faire vraiment... Euh, même, on peut le dire dix fois, on peut essayer de faire ce qu'on veut. Et il y en a beaucoup qui, 
D'abord, ils ne savent pas, ou alors c'est plutôt un, un côté concurrentiel, ou je ne sais pas quoi. Enfin bon, bref. Mais ça allait, ce n'était pas catastrophique du tout hein, en termes de nombre de personnes. Hein. Après, quand il y a eu le zoom bombing, après, ça, ça a diminué parce qu'il bon, y a différentes raisons en général pour que quand il quand y a un zoom bombing, il y a souvent une dizaine de personnes après qui n'arrivent plus à venir ou qui ne viennent plus ou qui sont parties. Hein. C'est ce qui se passe. Je, voilà. Mais ça, ce n'était pas, pas trop mauvais. Hein. Qu'est-ce que tu en penses, Gabor ah, je suis content. Je, euh, je pense que c'est une très bonne édition. C'est comme tu le sais, euh, avec chaque fois que vous faites la première fois, c'est difficile d'avoir des, des bonnes audiences, tout ça. Et maintenant, j'ai posé la question. Hein, la majorité des gens, comme d'habitude, ils disent qu'ils voudraient revenir. Donc là, on a déjà une espèce de une base de fans, d'audience. Euh, bon, euh, Anne, euh, si tu veux le faire en allemand, il faudra voir. Tu crois que Bachi sera repartant Il t'aidera de nous. Si, si, il veut en faire. Il veut en faire un. Il m'a dit qu'il voulait en faire un. On doit discuter euh, euh, bientôt. Là, on doit discuter de ça. Il veut faire un forum. Voilà, Moi, je voudrais être aussi de la partie puisque je suis le Suisse représentant du Social Select Forum. Moi, ça m'intéresse beaucoup. Et, et je pense qu'on est complémentaire avec Bachi. Je le, je le voyais, je le voyais plus agressif que ça. Euh, non, non, mais il est bon, hein, et il est gentil. Enfin, il est bon. Alors, la seule chose que je ne sais pas avec Bachi, pour être bien clair, est-ce qu'il a effectivement un côté Dr. Jekyll et un côté, un côté <rire> Mr. Hyde C'est la seule chose que je n'arrive pas encore à définir. Parce que comme il se met tellement en avant, comme il, comme il fait du personal branding ou lui-même est tout le temps là, tu, tu te poses des questions quelquefois par rapport à ça. Mais quand je l'écoute, il, il est excellent quand même. Il faut, faut dire oui, ce qu'il est. Hein. Il est, il est excellent, hein, Bachi. Voilà, hein, donc ça vaut vraiment la peine. Je suis, re, je suis ravi de ne pas avoir écouté à un moment donné certaines de vos réticences pour Bachi. Roger, je n'avais pas de problème. Roger, je savais qu'il était bon. Hein. Mm -hmm. Donc avec vous, avec, euh, il y avait une bonne équipe là. Hein. Il y avait des bons. Hein. Hein Même les Français. J'ai eu beaucoup de, de compliments sur la qualité des intervenants. Hein. On m'a envoyé beaucoup de, de messages LinkedIn déjà là, les ouais. gens que j'ai invités. Oui, oui, bah. Mais ça, c'est souvent facile, ça, hein, je vais te dire. La réalité, c'est que quand je fais un forum comme ça, il y a toujours deux tiers de très bons intervenants. Il y, a, il y en a un tiers un peu moins bon, mais ça passe à... C'est pas grave, c'est pas grave, tu vois. Ça, ça passe facilement. Voilà. Mmh. Hein, hein, tu, on l'avait déjà vu, Gabor. Hein. Donc, euh, pour répondre ouais. à ta question, Loïc, euh, oui, l'audience n'était pas comme tu voulais, mais c'est pas mal pour une première fois. Alors, au niveau de l'interactivité, je pense que c'était très bon. Euh, maintenant, la, la, la question, c'est est-ce qu'on répète Alors, on, pour une solution suisse alémanique en allemand, moi, je, je suis partant. Je pense qu'il y en a aussi. Mais bon, oui, ça dépend de la professionnelle. Tu as, as eu des touches, là, par rapport à ce que tu cherches ou c'était purement de la visibilité Tu parles de, de, de marchage d'emploi Oui. Oui, j'ai eu une offre, mais bon, pas satisfaisante. Donc, j'ai recommencé mes recherches. Ah, d'accord. J'ai eu une offre la semaine dernière que j'ai déclinée. Okay. Oh tu déclines des offres. Ah, oui, c'est bien. Oui. Bon, bah, ouais. hey, là, tu as appris des choses. Ce pas parce que je suis au chômage que je dois accepter n'importe quel salaire. Ah, là, là, tu, tu, tu t as appris des choses. Tu t'es connecté avec des gens. Tu vas te rendre visible. Tu peux montrer qui tu es également en vidéo. Je te signale. Hein, c'est pas mal. Hein. Euh, tu mm -hmm. peux récupérer. D'ailleurs, tu peux récupérer ça. Si vous voulez récupérer des extraits, hein, vous pouvez récupérer des extraits. D'accord. Hein, je le dis oui. à tout le monde. Je ne l'ai pas dit là devant tout le monde. J'aurais dû pour les animateurs. Simplement, il faut faire... Faut, faut... Il faut faire un crédit, un crédit Social Selling Forum. Ah, oui. voilà. Moi, j'aimerais bien avoir les slides de David, mais peut-être qu que si je lui demande, il peut me les donner. Parce oh, que David, peut-être qu'il la main parce que c'est tellement en général, rapide il donne que pas, pas ses slides. De... Hein. Tu vois, je n'ai pas eu le temps de prendre les notes sur les liens qu'il a, ouais. a montrés dans sa présentation. Donc, David, il te les donnera parce que sa présentation n'était pas une présentation. Elle euh, était bien, mais je veux dire. Mais Roger, il ne les donne pas en général. Hein. Roger oui, parce que c'est ses méthodes de travail, il veut les vendre. Euh, non, Roger, il est. Non, c'est. Oui. Enfin, je ne sais pas. Mais... Là, c'est pour ça que je l'avais demandé. Je lui ai bien dit que ça allait être streamé, etc., pour être sûr que ce qu'il présente, euh, il était OK. Hein. Parce que souvent, a... c'était compliqué à Zurich, justement, parce que tu avais deux, trois euh, qui ne voulaient pas euh, donner leur slide. Euh, OK. Bah, écoute, Gabor, moi, ce que je, ce que je propose, c'est que quand vous sentez n'importe toi, Gabor, puis Bachi va m'appeler, hein, que, que c'est un bon moment pour faire un forum, ben on le fait, hein, je veux dire, c'est pas la peine de, 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 de le prévoir six mois à l'avance ou neuf mois à l'avance, ouais. deux mois avant, euh, voilà. Je laisse le lead chez Bachi, moi je veux vous accompagner, tac, et moi j'aimerais bien en faire en automne, comme on fait d'habitude, en septembre, octobre, pour la partie euh, romande. Eh ben, écoute, plan... c'est très simple, tu planifies une date, à un moment donné, tu me donnes la date, d'accord Moi, deux mois à l'avance, je n'ai rien. Hein tu vas faire ton forum de nouveau, je pense, cet été ah, je vais faire de nouveau début juillet, je vais faire le festival et, et je ne sais pas encore si je ferai plus ou moins de forums que l'année dernière, euh, mais je, ouais, je teste différentes formules. Je, 
Mais oui, de toute façon, c'est bien de faire quelque chose à Genève, Après en France. Après le festival, je ouais. Après voilà. le ouais, ça suffit largement. Ok, bah écoutez, merci beaucoup encore. Et moi, je vais aller manger. Vraiment, je vais aller manger et oui, me merci. promener. Bon appétit, bonne balade aussi. Et après, je ferai, le, 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 je ferai un post d'ailleurs, hein, je pense, d'ici ce soir, euh, euh, avec ah, le replay aussi, et tout ça. Hein. Ok Bye. Merci beaucoup. Ciao. Ciao.